This is part four of the Craftsman King Sealy 100 Drill Press Conversion Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part three, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be cleaning up and polishing a lot of the parts. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. So if you recall from disassembly, two of the feed handle rods were bent and they're bent at where the threads meet the hub. So what I've got here is uh, a couple of nuts that are the same thread, and I've just threaded the rod into it, and I'm rotating it in my lathe, and then tapping it with a brass tip hammer to bend that threaded end of the rod back into shape and I'm not looking for it to be you know 100% within a few thou or some craziness like that it just needs to be relatively straight so you could do this in a vise as well you could do this by eye you don't even have to have that that dial indicator to do it if you wanted to but this is how I did it And once we finish that, then we're ready to go ahead and start cleaning and polishing these rods. And I've mentioned before that I got a second camera, and so all the rest of this imagery is going to be from above. I thought about doing side-by-side -side video, but I think you can see everything you need to see with just one camera. So... And you can see how those threads on the end are not perfectly aligned but they're good enough so the process we're going to go through here is anything that doesn't require a tight tolerance meaning that it has to fit within a bore or it has a bearing on it uh, we're going to dry sand and then wet sand and then polish so these rods are getting 100 grit and then 120 and then 220, and then 320, all dry sanding. And since we don't really care about the outside circumference of the rod, it doesn't really matter how much metal we're taking off here, but we're not taking a whole lot off. And once we've finished with the dry sanding, then we're going to wet sand. And I'm going to show you pretty much the whole process for this first rod. And then we're just going to look at cut footage for just about everything else in the video. But this way you see that, I mean, the rod already looks 100 times better than, than it did initially. But my goal here is to get that rod looking like chrome. So we've finished with the dry sanding. This is the 320 grit. And we're going to transition over to wet sanding. Here we are with wet sanding. So we're going to be using 400 grit, 600, 800, and then 1,000. And the key here is to keep the sandpaper wet and to rinse between each grit of sandpaper. 
if you don't rinse, you're going to be fighting yourself because you'll have grit still on the metal from the previous sandpaper grit, if that makes sense. So you've got to rinse between each sandpaper grit. And you've got to keep that sandpaper wet. The water is what allows it to do the polishing that it needs to do. And if you don't have a lathe, you can take a regular drill and put it inside a vise. And then uh, if it has a lock for the trigger, great. If it doesn't, you could wrap a uh, zip tie around the grip and the trigger to get it going and just chuck these parts inside a drill and do it with a drill. So all this is possible with very minimal tools. So this is the 800 grit. And as I mentioned in the previous video, this is the same process that we do the column with. Uh, it's just on a smaller scale. So final grit is 1,000, and you could go all the way to 3,000 or 7,000 grit if you wanted to, but we're going to be using that Mother's Mag and Aluminum polish, which would negate needing to do any additional sanding past 1,000 grit. So final rinse. And then we're going to get the water and all that sandpaper out of the way. And then we need to just dry that rod off. And then we're going to be applying that Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. I didn't mention it in the previous video, but you can get this stuff at any of your auto parts stores. AutoZone, uh, yeah, any auto parts store should have it. And I'm sure you can get it off of Amazon if you can't find it anywhere else. So then we're just going to buff the rod. Super simple. And there we are. That rod is complete. So we'll do that exact same process for the other two rods. And then these are the pins for the motor mount. And we're going to do the exact same process. Dry sand, wet sand, and then polish. Now, I'm not going to show you the full sanding and polishing of every single component. We'd be here for days, but all the video that you're going to see in this half hour video was shot over probably three days time frame. So it's quite a few hours of doing this, but here you can see that same rod wet sanding now, and then polishing. And, of course, none of this is required to rebuild your drill press. This is, this is just what I do when I rebuild drill presses. So, and we'll do that for both of those 
motor mount rods. And then we have the spindle. So the splined area of the spindle, that top area that's now inside the chuck, I cleaned up with the wire wheel on my grinder first. And I didn't record that, but you'll see some more wire wheel stuff later on. And since this is a tight tolerance part, we're only going to be wet sanding. So we do not want to take off a lot of metal here. All we want to do is clean this up. So we're going to wet sand with 400, 600, 800, and 1,000 grit. And then we'll polish. And I think I'm going to end up doing a video on uh, measuring runout and how to correct runout uh, coming up probably after I finish this series. So if you've got a drill press that's got some runout that you don't like, we'll, uh, we'll have a way of addressing that in the future here. But that's the spindle. And next we have the pinion. So again, we'll clean up the, the teeth area there, the gears themselves with the wire wheel. And we're just going to be polishing the rest of it. So wet sand, just like the um, spindle, no dry sanding, and then polishing. And I'll also do a little bit of sanding on the inside of the pinion as well. So this is the quill. And since part of it is chucked, we'll clean it in this direction. And then once we're done, we'll flip it over and clean that last inch and a half there. But we're going to only wet sand and then polish. And I'm not, I don't really spend a whole lot of time on the inside of the quill. You've got the two bores, one on each end for the bearings, and I don't want to mess with those tolerances. So they might get uh, the 600, 800, and 1,000 grit in those bores, but most of the time I don't do the 400 on the inside. And it's just those small stepped bores on each end that the bearing sits in. The center mm -hmm. part of the quill on the inside, it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to touch the inside uh, wall of the quill. So once we finish the quill, we've got the the rotor for the motor. This one can get a little tricky because you got all those blades hanging off of there and brackets hanging off of there. So getting close to the center of it is, uh, is a little unnerving, but um, I've got it to the point that I don't really worry about it. But Anybody else, you don't want to lose a finger, so just be careful. And again, we're just wet sanding because you've got bearings that are going to fit on that. So once you do both ends of it, next we have the sleeve for the Jacobs chuck. And this thing's in pretty rough shape. So it's going to get cleaned up and polished, but 
it's not going to look like chrome. So we are going to dry sand this part. So again, 100, 120, 220, and then 320. And then we'll wet sand. And then we'll polish. And it'll, it'll look a million times better than it did before, but it's still not going to have that chrome look to it because it's so pitted. Now, if it was one of the smooth sleeves, you can clean those up really good. You could just use a file to get it really smooth, but uh, on the paneled sleeves, it's a little bit more difficult. So next, we're going to be chucking the spindle back inside the lathe. And we're doing this so that we can clean up the Jacob's chuck body. So now we can spin the chuck safety lock collar onto the spindle. And then tighten that down. And that'll hold the chuck on the spindle. And then we're going to dry sand the chuck body and then wet sand it and then polish it. So the end where I'm at now and then the safety collar end, fairly safe to work around. But that center ring, it has cutouts on it from where the jaws ride in it. And it's very sharp. So you've got to be very careful dealing with that center ring. But after we've dry sanded and wet sanded, we went ahead and used the Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish. And we're just buffing it off of there now. And there's your chuck body. So this is the spindle pulley. And we're just going to clean up the shaft of it first and then we'll flip it over and clean up the pulley. So all the shaft is just going to get wet sanded. So 400, 600, 800 and 1000 and then we'll polish it. And then we'll flip the whole assembly over and then we're going to dry sand, wet sand, and then polish the pulley itself. So we only wet sanded the shaft because there are bearings that fit on it. But the pulley and all the sheaves on that pulley, we can dry sand and wet sand and then polish. And that is the spindle pulley. Not bad. So next we have the motor pulley. And I'm just going to use a piece of bar stock here to give us something to clamp. And then we'll lock it down with the set screw. And we'll clamp that in the chuck and we're going to dry sand and then wet sand and then polish the entire pulley. So that's the motor pulley. And here we are with the hub. And the best way to do this would be to put the pinion back inside the chuck, put the hub on the pinion, drop your pin in there, Keep in mind that that pin is splined and you really only want to drive it in one direction. 
And then for the hub, we're going to dry sand, wet sand, and then polish. So if your hub is, is chrome, unlike this one, then just clean up the chrome. Don't sand it. But here the chrome is completely gone. So we sanded it, dry, wet, and then polished it. And now it looks like chrome. We can drop that pen back out and slide it off of the pinion. Like so. And this is the feed tension knob. We're just going to chuck that inner band in the chuck. And this is another part that's normally chrome, but on the 51 and 52 machines, they did not chrome them, or sometimes they just painted over the chrome. So we have to sand it to get it to look like chrome again. So again, we'll dry sand wet sand, and then polish. And this is what it looks like after it's done. So all of these parts, once we're done with them, we're going to coat them with a penetrating oil. I like using super slick stuff. You can get this at Ace Hardware as well as other places. But I spray everything down with this stuff and then I wipe it down with a towel. You do not want to use WD-40 at this point because WD-40 has water in it and it will rust over time. So next, I really need to clean up this feed stop bracket. And normally I just sand them by hand completely. But I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, we could probably chuck it and clean the outer, the outer edge, the side facing left and right as we're looking at it here with it being chucked. And then finish up everything with, by hand. So we dry sanded, wet sanded, and then polished. And that cleaned up the, the, the sides of it, the top and the bottom of it. But as you can see, the part that's facing the camera, which technically is the side of it, still looks horrible. And we'll be cleaning that up by hand. So by hand, I mean literally sanding that with sandpaper by hand. So again, we're going to go back to dry sanding and we'll dry sand, wet sand, and then polish. And so back before I ever had a, a lathe, this is how I cleaned up most of the parts. And let me tell you, this is a lot of work. But with some elbow grease, you can get all these parts looking like chrome by doing it by hand. And this is the quill lock handle. And you can see how the chrome is flaked off of there and it was painted. So we're just going to dry sand, wet sand, and polish this part as well. And there's not anything that you can really put inside 
the metal lathe to clean that up. So it's all got to be done by hand. And I'm just using a small brass wheel, wire wheel, to clean up the grooves on the sides of it. And then we get to the wet sanding. Then we coat both of these parts in the mother's mag and aluminum polish. And then we're going to take them over to my grinder and one of the wheels on my grinder is a buffing wheel. And we're going to buff them. I don't really like doing it this way because you can see there's some black residue there. So the buffing wheel tends to uh, leave a black residue on there. I don't know if it's because the wheel's dirty or if it's moving too fast that it heats it up. But I'll come back with a cotton buffing wheel on a Dremel. This is on my Fordham to remove that black stuff and you can see it looks like chrome under it and I'll do that for both of those parts and so next we've got a ton of parts that we need to clean up with the wire wheel so this is the table lock handle. And we're just going to kind of go through a bunch of these parts getting wire wheeled, but nothing magical here. If you don't have a grinder with a wire wheel, you can get a wire wheel attachment for a drill, clamp that into a vise and then use that same method. This is one of the lock screws for the motor mount. So once we've got all those parts cleaned up, we're going to again coat them in the super slick stuff. So I spray everything and then I rotate all those parts and then spray the other side of them. That's all the stuff we wire wheeled. Then we spray the other side. And then we'll wipe each part down. And that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe. Video number five will be coming out the following week. And we will get on with uh, a little bit of fabrication and probably start painting. So until then, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.